Corinthians chapter 15. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. That's what David said. And uh, David loved the house of God. Amen. David loved the, the congregation of the saints. The Bible says, God shall be greatly feared in the congregation of the saints. That's right. So in the world, they don't fear God, but they, in the congregation of saints, God is greatly feared. Yes. Yes. Well, that's scripture. That's Amen. Right. So uh, we're so happy to see everybody. Amen. I, I was, uh, I was uh, proud, proud when I was gone just to think about you know, the church back home and Brother Samuel and I. We were out of town just thinking about you know Brother John and, and Brother Bill holding down the fort with Dayton amen. Street Church. and Amen. Good job, guys. Amen. Uh, praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And uh, just so happy to have a good home fellowship. Amen. amen. So God bless you all. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 in our Bibles. And we're going to read two verses for our opening verses today. And then we'll open in prayer. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 16 through 17. Amen. i got to turn there too. Amen. Praise God. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Praise God. Praise God. First Corinthians chapter 15. Yes, let's stand for the reading of God's Word. And the Word of the Lord says, For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised? And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain, and ye are yet in your sins. You're still in your sins if Christ is not raised. Amen? Right. Wow. Amen. Right. Let's, let's go ahead and pray. Yes, Lord. Father God, I pray for this sermon, God. I pray that you give us wisdom and understanding in the topic of the resurrection of the dead. I pray that we would walk away from here being better equipped, that, it, that we would all learn, that we would all grow, and we would all have a better picture of what is about to come, Lord, in the day of the Lord. We pray for, for your spirit to minister, God. I can't do anything without you, Lord. This is this is uh, your time, Lord. I ask that you would speak, and that you would give us what we need as a church, yes. which is more of you and less of us. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Jesus. Jesus. Amen. 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 You may be seated. So today we're talking about the resurrection of the dead. If Christ has not risen, then you are still in your sins. That's, right. mm. That's proof that Christ is risen. That you are come out of your sin. Right. Uh, how do we know that Jesus raised from the dead? Because we've been delivered from our sins. First Corinthians 15 says, If Christ is not risen, then you your faith is futile, and we are still in our sins. So we know Christ has risen, risen from the dead because the same resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead has now empowered us That's right. to walk in the newness of life. So this is the evidence that Christ has risen from the dead, is that you, you're filled with the same resurrection power, the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is now in you. Amen. That's the evidence. Amen. That's how you know without a shadow of a doubt that this is true. Amen? Amen. Right. You are witnesses of the resurrection of the dead. You are partaking in the body of Christ. You're partaking in the death and in the life of Christ. Every day we die daily. Why? So that Christ can live through us. That's right. So you are partaking, and now you are witnesses of the resurrection. And because He rose bodily, our mortal bodies shall also be raised. That's evidence. Because he raised from the dead, not only now we have we have the the earnest, which, which is the down payment, we have the Holy Spirit as evidence, and that's what's what seals us for the day of redemption. What is the day of redemption? We're gonna talk about that next. Uh, first Peter, turn to first Peter chapter three. First, I'm sorry, first Peter chapter one, verses three through five. First Peter chapter 1 verses 3 through 5 we're going to take a journey through the word of god today amen yes 
Amen. We're going to get fed today. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. First Peter chapter 1, 3 through 5. Is everybody there? Yeah. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Amen. So I wanted to point out here in, the, in verse 3, it says, he has begotten us again unto a lively hope. That means a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We have a living hope, don't we? Why do we have a living hope? Because we, we are experiencing the power that raised Jesus from the dead. We're experiencing the Holy Spirit in our lives. So that's why our hope is living. It's not a dead hope. It's not a dead religion. No, we are living now. We, our spirits have been made alive. And then it goes on to say, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So it's through His rising that we are too justified. It's through His resurrection that we too are, are, are living. Because He lives, we also live. Amen. Amen? So, to an inheritance, verse 4, to an inheritance un incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. What is this inheritance? This inheritance is your new body. You're going to inherit a new body that's undefiled. It is not going to fade away. It's reserved in heaven for you. Mm. Who are what? Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Okay, now what does that mean? I thought we were already saved. Well, we are, but it's not complete until the redemption of your bodies. That's when your salvation is complete, okay? Yep. Now we're saved, but we're also being saved, and we right. will be saved. Amen. That's right. Amen. <laughs> right, absolutely. So it's not, it's not uh, one, one prayer, one time of faith, and then we just go live like however we want. Right. No. Right. If you're saved, you're going to live saved, and you're going to endure to the end, and you're going to... Be saved when you get your new body. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's when God's gonna. That's when you're gonna be completely perfected. We're not perfected bodily. Amen. That's right. that's right. Amen. So we're gonna receive the redemption of our bodies. Let's turn to Philippians chapter three to read more on this. Philippians chapter three. Amen. Philippians chapter three. It is. Uh, Right after Ephesians, amen. Philippians chapter 3, amen. And we're talking about our, our new bodies, amen. Uh, chapter 3, verse 20 and 21, it says, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Amen. Amen. That's deep, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, but the point I'm trying to get you to see is that he's going to change our vile bodies. It talks about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 too. Our bodies are going to be changed. We're going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Yes, amen. We're going to be awesome, changed, Lord. okay? So we have yes. good things to look forward to. That's right. Yes. Amen. Yes. If we don't get caught up in this temporary life. Amen. What's the devil trying to do? The devil's trying to distract you to get your mind off of this, to get your mind off the mission, to get your mind off of what is coming. That's right. The day of the Lord. Yeah. The day of the Lord is when we will be resurrected. Mm -hmm. Amen. So he's going to change our vile body that it may be fashioned, or made like, unto His glorious body. So guess what? People are, got, um, if you go downtown, some people are saying, you know, 
Oh, uh, they're getting caught up in in skin color and in race, right? You see right. it. Yeah. The black Hebrew Israelites, right? Right. But it says whatever he looks like, we're going to be like him. So if he's black, I'm going to be black. If Amen. he's Amen. If he's if he's whatever he is, we're going to be like him. He's going to make our bodies like his bodies. Yeah. Skin color never mattered right. to That's to right. God. That's right. Jesus came for died for the sins of the whole world. That's right. That's right. Amen. That whosoever, whosoever, right. not just the Jews, right? Not just the whites, not just the blacks, not just the Indians and the and the Chinese. No, everybody for the sins of the whole world. Amen. He's the propitiation Jesus. for the sins of the whole world, not just for us. Right. Amen. 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 That's right. That's Glory right. to God. Okay, so we're going to get our new bodies. Well. We're also, we also need to realize that there's not just one resurrection, but there's two resurrections. And listen to this verse, Acts 24, 15. You'll need to turn there. It's Acts 24, 15. It says, And we have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. Both of the just and the unjust. Both means two, right? Yeah, that's right. So there's two resurrections. One for saints and one for sinners. Yeah. One's for the righteous and one's for the unrighteous. You're going to be in one or two camps. Amen? Amen. Amen. Absolutely. The next verse was Revelation 20, verse 6. It says, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. Right. That's the one for the saints, right? That's right. Blessed and holy is he that hath part of the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. This is what we have to look forward to. And it says, hath part in the first resurrection. There's a first resurrection. Uh, before I knew that, I was like, well, you know, maybe I can just go to the second resurrection. <laughs> but I was a new Christian because I'm like, uh, no, you got to be holy. Yeah, you got to take part in the first resurrection. That's right. That's the only people going to take part in the first <laughs> resurrection. That's right. Amen. Amen. Thank God for this truth. Amen. Right. Yes. And then the last verse I wanted to uh, show on that topic of there being two resurrections is John five twenty eight. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming. This is Jesus, in which all that are in the graves shall hear His voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Amen. Amen. That's John chapter 5, verse 28. So He's saying the same thing. All the Bible is saying the same thing. There's going to be a resurrection of the just and the resurrection of damnation. Amen? You don't want to be in that damnation because once you get damned, you're not coming out. Yeah. You're not coming out. There is no purgatory. Right. Uh, why does the devil come up with, with things like this? Because he wants you to he wants you to feel like you're going to have a second chance. Right. Yeah. The devil doesn't want you to think that this is it and then you're going to be judged. Mm -hmm. He wants yeah. you to think that, okay, no, your family members can pray you out. You know, they can do penance. They can give money to the church and pray you out of hell. That's... That's wicked. Yeah. Right. That's wicked. No, if you go to hell, that's your final judgment. You chose hell. Yeah. You chose to live each day for the devil. That's right. And it only takes a little leaven to leaven the whole lump. You have to be holy. That's the only thing that makes good sense. I don't want my wife to be faithful to me 99 days, and then she's been pretty good, so she can cheat on me <laughs> one day out of 100 days because she's not perfect, right? Right. <laughs> that, that's the silliness of this new doctrine out here. That no, every day we're wholeheartedly following God. That's right. We're taking every thought captive. The Bible says we're retaining God in our knowledge, mm. which means He's always on our mind. Everything has to go through the screen of God. Nothing gets by without going through God in, on my mind. He's, he's right. the screen that. If something's not of God, it, it gets stopped right there. I don't let it keep going. And, right. and, and the Bible says, you know, if you let it keep going, then, then, then there's going to be cockatrice eggs planted in your mind. That means snake eggs. Cockatrice are snakes. Are snake eggs. 
So the devil wants to plant snake eggs in your mind so that now you're thinking like the devil because you let That's you didn't right. take every thought captive and you let these things get into your mind, these thoughts, and now they've hatched and now you're you think like the devil. No, the, that's why you have to take every thought captive. When the devil wants to pin you against your brothers and sisters in Christ, you have to take that thought captive. You see? Because the devil's plan is for us to be divided. That's right. The devil's plan, because why? Because the church is in power when, when we're united. If the American church would wake up and unite, this whole homosexual spirit would be kicked out. That's right, yeah. So the devil wants to keep us divided through denominations and through all these different things that separate us. The devil wants to divide the church so that we're not powerful. When did, the, when did Pentecost fully come? When everybody was united in the upper room, praying, fasting, meeting together, being committed to one another, That's right. having their hearts knitted together in love. One mind, one spirit, one accord in all things. The power of God fell and the world was changed. But if they would have compromised and said, you know what, we don't really have to be holy. We don't. This is what the American church is saying, right? That's right. No, why? Because they still want their carnality. They still want the football games. They still want the parties. They still want the worldly pleasures. And there's nothing wrong in itself. Of we we have great fellowship, but but we're not. We're not carnal, right? right, right. We're, we're, we're heavenly minded. That's what the car, to be carnal is to be carnally minded, but to be spiritual is to be spiritually minded. So that this is the church. We are looking forward to this day. We're hearing people say, you know, which we don't know, but one lady said yesterday, "Hey, the Lord of the the day of the Lord's coming ten years from now, or less, or less." You know, and we were like, "Praise God." We're not gonna we're we're not gonna take that to the bank and say that's definitely the truth, but she was encouraged by that and she was um, she was she was counting her days. You know the Bible says to 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 count our days. You know David prayed to God and he said, God teach me to number my days. Right? Don't think you got a whole lot of time. Don't think that you got a a whole eighty years to live. That that's not the way a Christian thinks. No, Christ could come anytime. You have to be ready. And your house has to be in order. Right? It's lukewarm Christians that don't want Jesus to come back. That's right. The on fire Christians want Jesus to come back. Yeah. Amen. So, so there are two resurrections. But in Hebrews 11.35, it kind of sounds like something different. It says this, Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Have you ever heard this verse? Well, what this is meaning is that you, um, God rewards believers according to what they do in this life. That's right. Matthew 6, 19-20 says this, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rough doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is showing us that God's going to reward believers according to what they do in this life. Don't store up treasures on heaven. Store up treasures on earth. Amen? Spend, Amen. Spend, a lot of people they're trying to store up like they're like these squirrels trying to store up all their nuts, you know. And it's like no, God's like no. I'll provide each day what you need if you if you're generous and if you're storing up treasures in heaven. Amen. Amen. So this is how God changes us and renews our mind to think differently. Revelation twenty two verse twelve. It says, "And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me." To give to every man according as, as his work shall be. These verses show us that the size of our reward is dependent upon our choices down here. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'll say that again. The size of our reward is dependent upon the choices we do down here. We know Christ when he said that if you're faithful in the little things, I'll make you faith, I'll, I'll um, put, make you ruler of even cities. 
I'll make you ruler of many things. You know, when God sets up His new government, when Jesus sets up His new government, He's going to put people in, in rulers. He's going to set up people in His government. So there's going to be rulers, and, and, and God's going to decide who goes where. God's going to decide who's, who's in charge of what cities, who's in charge of what... Con I don't know how it's exactly how it's going to look like, right. if there's going to be countries or, or what, but there's going to be rulers. There's going to be people in this life that lived, and now God's putting them in command or in charge of the new heaven and the new earth. That's right. So this is why we need to be mindful of what we're doing down here so that we can obtain a better resurrection. That's the point of that verse. It's not to say that there's more than two resurrections. Right. It's to say that there's a better resurrection depending on what you do. Some people want to be martyred so that they can have a better, better resurrection. That's right. I mean, but I wouldn't, you know, don't be trying to get killed. <laughs> you know, we, we, we want you to stick around down here. Yeah. Amen. We love you. Love you too. But if it's God's will, you know, don't resist it. Because you know that God's got a great plan for you. In the real life, which is the eternal life. Mm -hmm. That's right. This is just a temporary uh, dress rehearsal mm -hmm. for the real thing, for the eternal thing. This is not what it's about. I always try to tell people that all the time on the streets is you're partying, you know, like what the Bible says. Let's eat and drink for tomorrow we die. You know, you have nothing to look forward to. So if you really believe that, yeah, you should go out there and waste your life and party it up and live like an idiot. I told one guy that I used to know, I told him, I said, you don't even believe in God, you don't believe in heaven or hell, so why do you even care about taking care of your kids? Nothing matters. You're just going to be here, if you're lucky, 60 or 70 years, and then you go into the dirt. So why take care of your kids? Don't pay child support. If I, if I was you, I would be a total deadbeat dad because there's no purpose in anything. Obviously, I didn't want him to be a deadbeat dad. I was just, I was just proving his point that he doesn't really believe in his heart of hearts that, that this all means nothing, right. and that there's no purpose to That's anything. Right. Right. No, there's a purpose to your life. There's a reason why we have to teach our kids the ways of God. There's a reason why we have to live holy and why? Because there's a resurrection. It's all leading up to this one event called the Day of the Lord, and the, and the first thing that happens on the Day of the Lord is the dead are raised first, those who have gone on and are asleep. So they're already in the ground. They're going to be pulled out of the ground, and they're going to be pulled out of the sea if they've been cremated. All these dead people that have lived before us are going to be raised out of the ground. It's going to be a marvelous sight. He's going to speak one word, rise! And it's going to be all, all powerful to raise all the dead people out of the earth at the same time. And then those who remain on the earth, they're going to meet them in the air. Hmm. They're going to meet them. So if we're still on the earth, which I think we will be, but I can't prove that, but if we're, those who are on the earth, we're going to meet the dead, the people that, that come out of the graves, we're going to meet them in the air. That's right. and, and that's what we're going to yeah. read next. So let's turn to that. Let's turn to second. Um, well, first let's turn to First Thessalonians, and then we'll turn to Second Thessalonians after that. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18. Amen. This is exciting, isn't it? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yes. First Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, starting in verse, we're going to start in verse 13. Amen. Everybody say amen when you're there. Amen. 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 Verse 13, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, it says, But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. 
we, we will not, uh, what that means is prevent, it means we will not, um, we will not beat them. They'll, they'll go first. So that would, that's what that means. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. These are comforting words. Why? Because those who are sleeping in Jesus, you're going to be with them again. So we have hope. If you don't believe this, you have no hope. Right. Amen. No, this is our hope is that those who are dead, those who are asleep in the ground, they're going to rise first and we're going to meet them in the air. And this is, this is a good thing. We're all going to be together with God. Yes. And then let's turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And we're going to read 1 through 12. Amen. And I want, you, I want you to see as we're reading through these verses that the day of the Lord and the resurrection are the same event. There's a, there's a teaching that's not true that says that we're going to be resurrected and raptured mm -hmm. and we're going to be with the Lord for seven years while the tribulation's happening. Mm. And then we're going to... We're going to be in the air for seven years and then and then come down. But that's nowhere in the Scripture. That's, nope. We have to stick to what is written in the Scripture. That's right. And that's why Paul wrote this is because people were saying stuff back then that weren't true too. So Paul gave us this in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 to make sure that we don't get it twisted. So keep in mind the resurrection of the Lord, the resurrection and the day of the Lord are, are always talked about as one event. Yeah, that's right. In So as we read through this, you can see that, okay? I just wanted to point that out before yeah. we start. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, starting in verse 1, it says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto Him. Okay, that's talking about the two events that they say are separate. Right. And he's saying they're one event. Right? Yes. That's right? He said, the coming of our Lord Jesus, that's the day of the Lord, and the gathering together unto Him. That's the rapture, right? Yes. So he's, he's talking about it as one event. Right. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. Whenever the Bible says that, you have to pay special attention, okay? Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, the day of the Lord, shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Yes. That's the Antichrist. Yep. Mm -hmm. Who opposeth, opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth, or restraineth, that he might be revealed in his time. So, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. So he says, you know what's restraining restraining the Antichrist. And that's the, the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is, God is the one who restrains evil. Some people think that's the church. I disagree. Yeah. No, so it's God. the Holy yeah. Spirit, yes, the Holy Spirit of God is actually restraining the evil. He's the one, as, peop, as men choose to do evil, God's allowing more evil to come into the world as men choose that route. Amen? So God, God's the one that, that is, is withholding or restraining the Antichrist until it's the right time. Then he'll be revealed. Amen? Verse 8, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy... 
with the brightness of His coming. Even Him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. You better really be in tune with the Spirit because this guy is going to look like Jesus. Mm -hmm. They're going to worship Him as God. Yeah. So He's going to convince people that He's God. And we know that the temple, at least, we know that He's going to be in a human body. That's right. The devil is going to take over a human body, and this is going to be the, the devil in a, in a man called the Antichrist. The son of perdition. Yep. So... He's going to come with all power and signs and lying wonders. Okay, he's going to he's going to look like a uh, uh, he's going to look like he's going to imitate God. Okay, so he's going to be doing miracles. I mean, it's going to be very convincing. Okay, so you, if we know these scriptures and we're we're looking for them, we're not going to go after the Antichrist like everybody else is. Right, that's right. All these religious people that are lukewarm, they're going to be deceived. Right there. Yeah. Yep. They're already being deceived. How are they not going to be, be deceived when greater deception comes? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. So we have to know the Scripture. Verse 10. With all deceive, deceivableness, which means deceitfulness, of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Mm. That's why when, when God gives you the truth, you better receive the, the love of that truth. Mm. There's love in the truth. It might not feel like love, but when, when correction comes, you receive that love of the truth. So why? So that you're not deceived. That's right. Sin de deceives us. Sin covers our eyes. Disobedience covers our eyes right. so that we cannot see. So when God tells us something, we trust Him and we do it. Immediately. Why? So that we don't go into blindness and be damned. That's right. Amen. Amen. So this is a very important for the church to understand that there's a reason why we have to obey. There's a reason why God gives us instructions and He expects us to trust Him even if we don't see it. Even if we don't see why. That's Amen. right. Amen. When I was a kid, I would always say, why? Why do I have to do that? My dad would say, because I told you. Because I Amen? Said so. Because I said so. <laughs> yeah. So this is what God says sometimes. If we don't see something, no, we, we do it because He says so. That's right. Amen? And why? So that we don't go into strong delusion yeah. that we should believe a lie. The world, has got, the, the world is in strong delusion. Right. Amen. These people, we were, last night, we were... At a uh, haunted house, it was called Hell's Dungeon, yeah. and it was the most wicked thing. They were conjuring up all kinds of evil spirits, and I uh, even had pictures of some of the demons online. Yeah. Amen. These are real demons, That's right. and they're real demon spirits. So, what's happening, guys, is that these people are under strong delusion. They they think everything everything is fun and games. Everything's at ease. One person drove by and they said, Oh, we're just having some Halloween fun. Settle down. Right? Mm -hmm. This is the attitude of the world. Yeah. Everything's at ease. But what does God say? God says, be diligent mm -hmm. to be watchmen. You know, God says the opposite. Woe to those who are at ease right. in Zion. Yeah. Yeah. God, God is telling us to do the opposite of what the world's saying. The world's saying, go to sleep. God's saying, wake up. <laughs> Amen. The world's saying, take it easy. God's saying, be diligent. See? It's two different voices. That's why the world, they're all drinking wine. Why? Because the wine yeah. puts you to sleep. Right. The right. wine puts you at ease. Right. But God's saying, this is not the time to be at ease. You need to run this race with everything that's in you. You know how you work out? You eat the right things, right? You right. pump your iron. You are on a schedule. Everything is disciplined. How much more should we be that way with our spiritual walk? Amen. That's why Paul said, run this race like you're an Olympian. Yeah. Live your spiritual life like you're training for, for the Olympics. Yeah. That's the life of a, of a true Christian. Yeah. 
That's why Jesus said you can't be my disciple unless you forsake all that you have. Because this is going to cost you everything. Yeah. Count the cost. Are, mm -hmm. you, are you running with everything in you? If not, change that. Because these are the saints that are going to go marching in. <laughs> We're going to go marching in. We're not going to go in all beat up. Amen? Right. Amen. We're, we're spiritually in shape. Yep. We're spiritually Iron Men. Mm -hmm. Okay? I won Iron Man two years in a row in the Army when I was a, a young buck. Mm -hmm. And uh, and why? Because I, I, I gave myself to it. I was determined second place wasn't an option. Right. Second place is not an option. I have to beat... For, I have to beat first by a long shot. So whatever they're doing, I'm doing twice as much as they were doing to train. And these guys had m way much more natural ability than I had. I had guys running against me that were track stars in college. I'm talking about officers in the military. So I had to make sure because I don't have that natural gift. I'm a big guy, you know. I don't have that natural gift to run like a deer. Amen. <laughs> Praise God for those who do. But I had to work harder than those guys. And that's how we are spiritually. We might not have the natural gift, but we need to run twice as hard as everybody else. And we're not competing each other like, like carnal ways. No, we're in this in this race, we're trying to boost you. To even beat us, and that's and that's winning the race is to count others more important than yourselves. Amen. That's what God says to do: count others more important than yourself. Right. So this is a different race. We're not competing against each other. I'm not trying to tear you down so that I can win the race. Right. No, this is a race. Whereas you're 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 exhorting others and provoking others unto good works, so that we can all get first place. We can all enter striding and striving through the finish line when Christ comes back. When Christ comes back, He doesn't want to find you surprised. What did He say? Blessed is He who is, what? In faith. Shall I find faith on the earth when I return? Mm -hmm. What is the faith of Abraham? A Abraham left his mother and father. He left everybody that he knew to go pitch a tent in the middle of the wilderness. Yeah. People were calling him crazy. You better believe it. Oh, yeah. People were mocking him, and I'm sure his family rejected him. You're cut off from the family inheritance. I'm sure stuff like that happened to him. Right. See, and this is what it means to have the faith of Abraham. You are striving. Strive to enter in at that narrow gate. For many will try to enter in and will not be able to. Right. Don't waste your time right now. This is the time God is preparing us for a greater work right before he returns we're going to be working the works of Christ that's right uh -huh. while it's still day and this is the last part of the day before Christ returns so what God want, does not want us to take it easy God wants us to make sure everything's in order our families are in order our relationships are in order we're walking in the spirit we're not falling into any past sins we're striving we're running the other direction I want to get as far away from sin as I can. I don't want to. I don't want to see how close I can get and not cross the line. That's right. No, you have to. You have to make sure that all temptation is far from you. Yeah. Now, if you're tempted, it's because it's not because you've been ne neglecting your salvation. That's what I mean by that. Right. No. If I'm tempted, it's not because I'm neglecting my salvation. It's not because I haven't been in my Bible. It's no. It's because. The devil sees me kicking his rear, yep. and he right. wants to try to put a stumbling block in my way. Amen. That's right. Amen. And this church is kicking the devil's rear. Yeah. Right. Amen. You are making a difference. You are making a difference because of Jesus. Amen. It's not because of us. It's because we're because we are striving for the faith Amen. once delivered for the to the saints. Amen. And you are a a big when and when when it comes to your place in the body, you are irreplaceable. God does not want you to be replaced. He wants to use you. God chose you. So don't be disqualified. Amen. Amen. People are being disqualified in these last days. No. Find a good church. Find a good committed church. And what? And, and be committed not only to God, but be committed to the saints. Amen. 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 
God doesn't want us only to be evangelists. No, He wants us to be a church. Amen. And to Jesus. love each other That's and right. to have people that are family. Yes. We are the household of God. That means the family of God. Amen. That's right. So so the the church is built on the Word of God, mm -hmm. but it's also built on relationships. Mm -hmm. We're building relationships, aren't we? Amen. I'm striving to have good relationships with you. And, and God gave us those two commandments. Love God and love each other. Why? Because He's a relational God. Right. He wants love. And love is... And we're not talking about the world's love. We're talking about pure love. Yeah. Yeah. Pure yeah. love that sacrifices so that others can benefit. Amen. It's not about us anymore. It's not about what I want, what's going to benefit me. That was the way you thought in the world. No, now you're looking for ways to bless your brothers and sisters. Now you're sacrificing, thinking during the week, okay, how can I, how can I bless my church this week? Right. And we even said, you know, we have special relationships in here. And I want to continue to build these relationships. Because it's more than street evangelism. That's just an overflow of our, of our love. Amen. 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 Right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So let's turn to 1 Corinthians 15. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15, and we're going to close with a reading out of 1 Corinthians 15. Who knows that 1 Corinthians 15 is all about the resurrection? Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's all about the resurrection. The whole chapter is about the resurrection. So I don't... Yes, I don't know. We're going to get through the whole chapter. There's a lot there, but um, we're going to start at verse 12. Amen. Now if 1 Corinthians chapter 15, amen, verse 12, mm -hmm. let me know when you're there. Amen. 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 It amen. says, Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching in vain, and our, your faith is also vain. <coughs> Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that He has raised up, that He has raised up Christ, whom He has not raised up. If so, be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. Then they also, which are fallen asleep in Christ, are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most, most miserable. We are of all men most miserable. So he's saying it's all about the resurrection of the dead. Because people were saying in, in that church, in the... Corinthian church, Paul's writing to them and he was hearing, he was getting feedback from the leaders in the church that people were, were going around saying that there is no resurrection of the dead. So he, Paul's always dealing with this issue of the resurrection. People saying in 2 Thessalonians that the day of the Lord had already came. No. And now here he's dealing with the Corinthians and saying, no, if, if there is no resurrection of the dead, okay. So there were Pharisees that believed in the resurrection of the dead. Right. There were Sadducees that did not believe in the resurrection of the dead. Right. And I'm thinking, what kind of religious leader would not... What's the point of a religious leader yeah. if there is no resurrection of the dead? Yeah. But And that's why people say, they're sad, you see. <laughs> yeah, man. A little joke for it. Sad you see. They're sad you sees. They don't believe in the resurrection of the dead. Yeah. Sad. Amen. Or, or angels or anything. Yes, they don't believe in angels or in any supernatural things. Yeah. So this is why this is Paul saying this is the whole point. The whole point is if, if Christ didn't rise, then we're then we're not why why are we still in our sins if Christ has not rise? Because it's by that resurrection power that we're being kept. Yeah. We're being kept by the power of God through faith. Yes. As we believe, God's giving us grace to be saved. Yes. God sealed us with the Holy Spirit. God's giving us a, a daily portion of the manna from heaven. 
which is Jesus. He's giving us yes. grace from heaven as we as we act in faith, as we seek God, as we go and pray and read our Bibles every morning. What he's giving us a portion for that day. To what? A, a sufficient portion to sustain ourselves. We need to be spiritually sustained. That's why we when God's given us bodies, we eat, right? And we get strength. And that's the same thing spiritually. We need to eat and go and get our manna from heaven. Remember, remember the Israelites. They would have to go outside. If you read that story in Exodus, they had to go outside of their tents. Every morning, God would put bread outside of their tents. This was the manna from heaven. And that was meant to symbolize us, what we need to do. God gives us a portion each day, a portion of His Spirit. Manna from heaven. But you have to go seek Him and get it. You have to go to your prayer closet and get it. You have to go and get in your Bible and eat and be fed for that day. And God will fill you. That's why I'm still sustained today. That's why I'm not in my sins. That's right, amen. If yeah. Christ has not risen from the dead, then you would be in your sins. It wouldn't matter if you prayed. It wouldn't matter because there would be no resurrection power available to you. Yes. So the reason why the death and burial and resurrection is so important, why the gospel is so important, is because it makes this available to you. There had to be blood for your past sins. There had to be a covering of your wicked ways so that the new man could be birthed and so that you could have access into the Holy of Holies. You could have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit doesn't dwell in unclean temples. No, that's right. So, God is, is showing us what all these things mean. Amen. So, let's keep going in verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Okay. So in Adam all die. Because of Adam, we all have to physically die. Right. Okay. In Adam. Right. So in Christ, all shall be made alive. But not everybody's in Christ. Right. Okay? All are made. Some people look at that verse and they say, look, all are going to be made alive. But he's saying, no, in Christ, all are made alive. Right. Amen? Yes. But every man, verse 23, but every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Okay. Let me, let me explain this to you. Okay, so the Bible says, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. God the Father is telling Jesus Christ to sit at His right hand until all things are put under Him. Once Now, at the end of the thousand year reign, all things are going to be put under Christ. All things are going to be subject to Christ. And then this verse is saying that God the Father will be coming down and Christ will be presenting everything to the Father as perfect. We're going to be in our new bodies. He has restored the earth. He has set up His government. Everything is set up. Everything's ready to be presented to who? To the Father. Mm -hmm. That's what this is teaching. That's the great will of God. Is that everything, so that what? So that God will be all in all. Amen. So Christ is in charge of putting all things under Him. And then, this is a beautiful love story. Amen. This is a love story between the Son of God and the Father. 
Amen? Amen. And um, so I want to read that verse to you again. Verse 24. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. You see that? Amen. So he's going to reign until all enemies are put on his feet, even death, right? Even yeah. death. So, so we already know that, that, death, that death couldn't hold him. We already know that Christ has won the victory on the cross. Mm -hmm. But now we're just seeing it played out. Now he's giving time to humanity to choose if they're going to submit or if they're going to go to hell. If they're going to submit and come under. We're under the feet of Christ. We've been won. <laughs> We've been bought at a price. We are in subjection to Jesus. Amen. Everything that's not in subjection to Jesus is going to be rooted out of the earth and thrown into the fire. Amen. So whatever is subjected to Jesus is going to last forever. And it's going to be presented unto the Father as He comes down the New Jerusalem. He's going to come down, if you read the end of the book, Revelation 21 and 22... The new Jerusalem is going to come down at the end of the thousand years. This is what this is talking about. That's when all things are already subdued under, under Jesus. Mm -hmm. So this is the great plan of God. Amen. Isn't this amazing? Um, and then ver let's do verse 29. So it says, Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? If the dead rise not at all, why are not they then baptized for the why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand ye in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage it me? What advantage does it have for me? If the dead rise not. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Amen. Amen. So that's saying that, you know, he's just furthering his point. Like, we're bat like when we're baptized for the dead... Like, why would we even get baptized if there's no resurrection of the dead? The whole, it, the whole thing represents you dying with Christ. And we're dying to sin, dying to this life, dying to this world, dying to our dreams and our, what, what we wanted for our life. And now we're rising in Christ through the resurrection power, the same resurrection power. We're rising with Christ to walk in the newness of life. He's saying, if, if why get baptized for the dead if we don't rise? What what are we doing these religious? Why are we doing these religious ceremonies? These, these religious things? Why are we doing them if they don't mean anything? No, it's it's not the physical baptism of water that saves us. It's the meaning behind it. But yes, we're going to get baptized in water if we're saved because we obey God. God says to be baptized in water. But Paul's saying if, if, if there's no resurrection, then why are we even doing this? Why are we be, being baptized for the dead? If, if this isn't the case. So let's go on to 35. But some men will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear again. It may chance of wheat or of some of other grain. Amen. I'm going to just say what he's talking about right here. He's saying, okay, so, so they say, well, what body are we going to have? You know, because we're going to be... Now, what does it mean to sow? Sow means to, to plant in the ground. So we're sowed, when we die and we go in the earth, that's supposed to be represent being sowed into the earth. But then there's a resurrection that happens, and you, you're resurrected. And he's saying, well, what body are we going to have once we're sowed 
And once we're brought back up, he and now Paul's going to give us a lesson in farming. Okay? In verse 38. But God giveth it a body, so it's sown a seed, but God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. So the glory of, of heavenly bodies is one, and the glory of earthly bodies is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul, and the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. How be it that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy the second man is the lord from heaven as is earthy such are they also that are earthy and as is heavenly such are they also that are heavenly and as we have borne the image of the earthy we shall also bear the image of the heavenly now this i say brethren that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god neither doth corruption inherit and corruption Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. So because you have this hope that, that you're going to receive your new body, your, in, your corruptible is going to put on incorruption. Because you're going to receive this new body, because of the hope plan, because of this, you're going to work. You're going to what? Always abound in the work of the Lord. Why? Because we know it's not about this life. They're living this life because this is all they got. We, we have this hope, the blessed hope of the return of Christ and us being changed. That's the hope. And it's, it's the lively hope, the living hope. Because we have already the down payment, the earnest of our salvation, which is the Holy Spirit. Amen. If the Holy Spirit was ever to leave you, yeah. you're in big trouble. So the Bible says anyone does, who does not have the Spirit of Christ is not His. That's Romans chapter 8, verse 9. So, you have to make sure that you're a clean temple. There's no, there's, there's no tolerance for sin. Amen? Amen. Let's go ahead and stand and close in prayer. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We have a we have a living hope. Amen. And believe me, guys, it's going to go like this. This life is going to go like this. 
Okay? Yeah. And then before you know it, you'll be standing before Christ to be judged. That's right. You're going to be judged. Amen. Amen. And we all got to make it. We got to make it. We can't fail. We got to we got to train like that Olympian to make sure. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this word. We thank you that we have a soon hope that is coming quickly. Lord, I pray that each one here, Lord, that we would all be ready. Thank you, Lord. That we, we would lose none, Father. And that uh, we would be your faithful people, your, your spotless bride, your chaste virgin, yes. that we would have clean robes, white, righteous robes, and that we would not be defiled. Yes. We need you, Father. We need your, we need your correction. We need your leadership. We need your spirit, because we can't do this in our flesh. It's only by your mercy and grace that we're saved. So please, Father, keep your hand upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. We bless you. We love you. We thank you. Thank you for your presence in this service, God. You are all that is good, all that is wonderful. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Bless each one, Lord. And keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good Lord, have a Amen. The bathroom. <sighs> Praise the Lord. We have a cake. Amen. Yeah. Birthday cake. Hallelujah. Nice,